Hi guys, Chris here, and you're watching Here We Are Running, and welcome back to the channel for another episode. Getting very, very close to the end of this series now, guys, but another episode in my training for the North Downs Way 50, my first 50 miler taking place on Saturday. It's all getting very, very real, especially because uh, this came. And this, as you can probably guess, is the race number. So there we have it, guys. Uh, I'll, in next week's video, which will be published early, I will, I will give you, you can see my race number, but I will give you the link for tracking if you want to see how I'm getting on and tune in a few times during the actual day itself. So yeah, race number has arrived. Uh, and another quick reminder before we get into the bulk of this video, uh, the National Running Show, uh, for which I'm an ambassador, is taking place in July at Farnborough. Uh, if you do want to go, you can still get free tickets. A, a link below and click on that and use my ambassador code and you'll get free tickets. Uh, should be a great event. Running community coming together again, which seems ages since that last happened. Uh, and to see all that fantastic stuff in Farnborough. Right, today's video, we've called it cows and calves. To be honest, we should have called last week's video cows and calves. And shout out to Mark G, the test run, because he was commenting, watching and then commenting on last week's video. And he said, it's all about the cows and calves. Well, yes, it was all about the cows and calves. And... Yeah, in last week's video, if you watched it, towards the end, I had a problem with my calf. My left calf, it started causing some discomfort. I had to stop the run short. I walked the remaining part back home. And really, this week, I haven't been running at all. I've been just focusing on the calf and getting it better in time for next week's race. But I did think, you know, when you're watching one of my videos and I'm out on the trails, I do like to film a little bit of the cows, don't I? Well, I've gone through the series and I've picked out some of my best cow shots, but create a little montage for you before we give you the calf update. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Couldn't get out there running, but a look back at some of the cows that have featured in earlier episodes. Let's talk about the calf. It's the left hand leg, and it's on the outer edge, I guess you'd say, of the leg, towards the bottom, um, around the ankle area, in fact. And on the Saturday, the day of the run, and the Sunday, and the Monday, even though it was improving during that time, I could still still feel it as I was walking around the house, just doing my day-to-day -day type stuff. I could not feel it anymore doing that when we got to Tuesday. So that was a positive sign on the Tuesday. But I could, of course, feel it when I was rolling it or using the massage gun on it. And to, just to say, I've been treating this with rest, obviously, because I haven't been out running at all this week. I've been using, I've been stretching, uh, I've been using the roller on it and I've been using the massage gun on it. And I've been trying to do that twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. It's my normal recovery routine anyway, 
uh, I've just been much more regimental doing it during twice a day and during it every day of this week because I want to give myself the best chance of getting to that stars line and it certainly has improved every single day which is a, a promising sign there's been no setbacks and now it's actually quite hard to find any discomfort even when I'm pressing on the area of concern so I'm not going to say it's fully better now but it's certainly improved a lot over the course of the first week since it occurring. It leaves me a little bit of a dilemma because what do I do? Do I do a test run during the next week before race day itself or do I just continue to let it rest, continue to do those recovery things and just turn up at the start line? And, and I think that is the approach I'm actually gonna take. I, I've been debating this in my own mind and thinking, right, if I actually do a test run, let's say 5K on some soft ground just to see how it is, chances are it's gonna be fine, to be honest. But what's that told me? It's just told me over a short distance, it's gonna be fine. The, the, the key thing I wanna know, and I won't know until race day, is it, is it gonna be fine over a longer distance? So I think what I'm gonna do, obviously ideally in a taper, two week taper or the remaining two weeks of a taper, you would like to get out there and do some runs uh, of shorter distance and, and just keep the body ticking over. But given what happened last week, for me, the taper's different now. The taper switched to, I've actually just gotta get myself in good enough shape to get to the start line. And we won't know, we won't know whether it's going to reoccur during the 50 mile race or not it might be absolutely fine and that's what i'm hoping for keeping my fingers crossed for that it will be fine during the race itself and i think that's what i'm going to do i'm not going to do a test run i'm just going to get to the start line and i know now i can get to the start line the discomfort has gone enough to know that i i'm not gonna uh, you know i i need to now run on it but i need to try it out really during the race and see what happens um it's going to be my biggest challenge during the race, it's fair to say. Before this, the biggest challenge was could I keep my energy levels up throughout the whole 50 miles, knowing that when I did the 50k training run, that was the area, it wasn't my legs, it was the energy levels dipping towards the 50k mark that caused me some concern. But now, clearly, the biggest challenge is do I get a reoccurrence of that calf issue that I've picked up just last week? We'll find out next week, won't we? Um, so that's the plan and that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, but it has given me a lot of time to think about other things, to really, really prepare for the race itself. Um, I have already started thinking about my, nu my nutrition beforehand. I'm trying to eat sensibly throughout this week, trying to sleep well, and I'll continue that on into the final week. And I've also tried to make sure I'm hydrated right from this early stage. So, yeah, I've been taking an electrolyte tablet. Um, we've been having this drink once a day, every day, and we'll carry on doing that up to race day. Uh, so that's just an electrolyte tablet. And then I've also been doing research into nutrition and hydration and, and just trying to make sure that I understand the amount of calories that I should be taking on to maintain those energy levels. And what is it I'm gonna take with me? What am I gonna rely on at the aid stations? And it's, uh, you need quite a lot of stuff, to be honest, in terms of gels, in terms of snacks, in terms of tailwind, which I'm taking as well. Uh, I've got all my kit now laid out on the table in preparation. I've not packed any of it yet. I'm gonna do that and I'll talk you through the kit in more detail in next week's video, which will be going live before the race so that you can see what I'm taking with me. But I have got it all laid out on the table and, and there's a lot of it. I'm hoping it's all gonna fit in. Uh, the final bits of mandatory kit, we got that. So what do we get this week? Oh yep, we got the whistle. Um, so that's mandatory, That's we've got that. We've got a head torch and in the end, uh, I went for it's quite a bright one, uh, but it's also, it's just a, a cheap one that I got on Amazon. Uh, so head, Ooh, turn it off. Head torch is, is got, I, we shouldn't have to use this. This should stay in the bag the whole time because it shouldn't be dark by the time we get to the end. So I'm hoping that stays in the bag. 
and don't need it. And that's why I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a head torch at this stage. But it's there if I do need it, and it is a bright one, and it's rechargeable, so it'll be fully charged before we start the race. Um, also worth mentioning, I've been using these little bags to keep all my stuff into. They're the little tip for you. If you get the COVID test packs that we get sent to do our COVID tests twice a week, I dispose of my tests hygienically, but I keep these bags. And they're ideal for putting all the stuff we need for the, uh, for the race, for these sort of things. Look, spare pair of socks, tuck them into the bag, stick them in your backpack, keeps it all nice and neat. The other thing I bought this week was a little first aid kit, really small one, took most of the contents out to be honest and put my own stuff in. So I've got a pair of scissors in there, got plasters, got um, things to clean yourself if you, if you graze yourself at all. Uh, and that will be going into the backpack as well, just in case it's needed during the race. So I think I've pretty much got everything now that I need. It's just a case of packing it. And as I say, we'll do that in next week's video. Final thing I wanted to cover off in this video was about my watch. So again, I've been looking at the watch. As most of you might know, who've been watching the videos. I've got a Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro. Bought it earlier on during the training block, specifically for the training and then the race itself. I've downloaded well actually I've created my own um, GPX file of the North Downs Way 50 course, also marking onto it the aid stations, where they are, uh, save that, put it, um, synced it with the watch. So that course is on here now and I can follow that course, although I know the course pretty well, I can still follow that course and it can tell me information that I think is gonna be useful, like how long is left in terms of distance of the race. Uh, how long it is to the next aid station. And I've sort of worked out the watch screens that I'm gonna have, the data screens I'm gonna have on here. I think there's, there's probably four of them that are giving me certain bits of information. So quickly take you through those now. Okay, so here's the first screen. Uh, this is my normal, regular screen that I tend to have running on all my runs. So you've got the heart rate at the top, you've got the lap pace at the bottom, You've got the distance to one side and the timer to the other side. And then the next screen is it, it, it's exactly the same, except I've got distance remaining instead of distance. Now, when I get over the halfway stage, that is probably what I'll switch to. The third one, quite an interesting one here. So I'll split it into four again. I've got distance to next. So that should be telling me the distance until the next aid station. Uh, then I've got time to next, which should tell me roughly how long it will take me to get there, as well as distance remaining and the estimated time it's going to take for me to get to the final, uh, to, to the finish, sorry. And then finally, I've put this screen on. Now, this should be telling me, the ascent should be telling me how much elevation I've done at any particular point that I'm looking at this, but also at the bottom there, vertical distance to destination should be telling me how much more elevation I've got to go until I get to the finish. Okay guys, that brings you right up to date and I hope you've enjoyed the video. As I say, there will be a final training episode, although it's gonna feature all about my gear and stuff and my preparation and final thoughts before the race. I'll aim to uh, record that during the week and release it on Friday. So thanks again for watching this video. Thanks for getting to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed it, please do hit that thumbs up button to give it a like. And if you're new around here, well, why not consider subscribing? But for now, guys, goodbye.